I don't have a lot of gins or spirits at land on my tasting table, but I love to share them when I do with you. So this is a really nice gin. So I was curious and I compared and contrasted this with say uh, London Dry Gins and uh, to understand what Sonoma Dry Gin is. So I did try the London Dries against each other and with this. And I really felt that the London Dries are very, I wouldn't say similar, but they have a, a characteristic that runs through the thread of those experiences. When it came to Sonoma Dry Gin, and again, I would say that there's no definitive definition of what Sonoma Dry Gin is. It's an expression, and it's really talking about some local ingredients, local botanicals that are utilized in this gin. Now, let me show you the label up close. Now, I think it's a really cool label. Uh, very nicely done. This is a $35 suggested retail price point. The back label for you to look at here. There's two things I want to read. I want to read just a bit of the copy in the back. So on the neck here, it gives information on Grattan, uh, Grattan distilling population 1,707. It gives the uh, coordinates. So this is 38 uh, degrees, 26 uh, minutes and 15 seconds north. 122 degrees 51 minutes 59 seconds west so you know exactly where this is being distilled i think it's a really nice label and a nice package itself it's something that you know i could keep this for other things so uh, i do have a good bottle collection and i do keep my bottles often after the contents have gone because i really want to uh, obviously not throw something away that can be really a nice feature maybe a water bottle not everybody's going to save their bottles but I do, and I, I really like to suggest other people to think about that uh, at least, or at least retain one and see if you're gonna use it, and if not, recycle. So taste neat when you first acquire your gins. You really wanna smell and taste them and enjoy them and experience them because often today, you're gonna find a lot of tonics that are really um, you know, nicely aromatized. There's gonna be a lot of nice ingredients and uh, there's a reason for it, right? It's tonic water and there's a fine art of tonic water. So I think, you know, it's nothing to, you know, really talk negatively about uh, tonic producers because I definitely enjoy a gin and tonic, of course. But it's like every other, you know, maybe a whiskey, before you start blending it with something or mixing it, you want to taste neat and enjoy and get that characterization. And so when I do something like that, I'm gonna taste it in a, say, a wine glass like this because I have a nice opening. I'm not going to taste this in a shot glass or any other, you know, vessel without getting something that I can swirl around a bit and to get those aromatics going. And, you know, oftentimes, say, grappa would be served in something like this. So this might be too small. I did pour a little in here to understand if I can smell. This was optimum. And so you might want to think about that. So always taste neat before you start mixing. So here we go first. I'm gonna give you some characteristics on the botanicals of this. They have some exotic, what they call exotic California botanicals. And they are Meyer lemon, Buddha hand, chamomile, and peppermint. And then they have a lot of sourced materials. So they're getting other botanicals from other points on the planet, such as orris root from Poland, coriander from Morocco, angelica root from Poland again, juniper from Italy, cardamom from Guatemala, galangal, which I'm not sure, I've not had that in a gin before, at least to my knowledge, that's from India, and star anise is coming from China. So grains of paradise, I don't ever recall tasting, uh, but I think that's really the, the fun point of tasting gin and understanding what distills well together and makes for distinction. So bright tonality of citrus on the nose here. Uh, you know, I think that Budahan and the Meyer lemon comes through nicely, evenly, as well as uh, evergreen forest in autumn time. So it's, you know, there's a, a very evocative characterization that comes out of many autumnal settings. It's a forest, it's a, um, maybe it's a prairie, maybe it's a, a, vi a vineyard, or it's even a orchard, as I've experienced in the past, as well as underbrush and uh, ground cardamom. Outstanding, next, the palette characterization. So on the palate experience is really informing. This is not London Dry. It's a Sonoma Dry gin, if I can use that term from Grattan Distilling. But I think that's the, the beauty of this. And so on this, uh, pepper notes, dried citrus peel, a bit of citrus pulp, ground clove, and simmering spices. So what I enjoyed about this is this held up well to tonic water. Not that all gins don't, but uh, sometimes they get lost in the mix, so to speak. On the pepper notation, it really came through and it informed me that this is not just pepper notation, but it's also juniper notation. And you're just definitely informed that your gin does not get lost in the cocktail that you're enjoying. So this gin is 94 points out of 100 points, fantastic gin. And uh, I love to know your questions and comments down below. Please let me know what your favorite gins are. I'm very curious. And uh, you know, have you tasted this gin before? And what are your thoughts about this gin? So down below is the subscribe button. Please hit that button if you haven't done so already. You'll see the latest videos that I'm producing. And if you have, 
Thank you so much. I do appreciate it. Cheers to you. And uh, please give a like if you like this video. And that's also down below. And questions and comments you can list down below. And uh, between videos, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and WordPress. Additionally, you'll find me on my podcast, which is on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Sante.